Now let's turn our attention to MBR and GPT partitions. Now there are two partition types available to you in Windows Server 2012, and you'll probably never guess what they are, right? Master Boot Record Partitions, or MBR, and Globally Unique Identifier Partition Table, or GPT. Let me warn you, you're going to see a lot of different pronunciations of this GUID. You'll hear GUID, 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 all sorts of things out there. But the bottom line is that stands for Globally Unique Identifier. And these two partitions handle organizing the data on the disk very differently. So let's talk about how each one works. Now I'm going to give you kind of the red flag bullet points, things that you can watch for that should trigger in your memory on which one of these partitions either solves what issue or is affected by that issue. And using that, you should be able to deduce from your available answers which one is correct. So the master boot record or the MBR, this is the traditional configuration for the x86 based machines. All disk info is stored on the first sector of the disk. Now we've been through this before, right? When you delete a file, the data doesn't actually go away. We just simply delete some of the library information that points to it out in that first sector of the disk, and the data is actually still out there on the disk. We had security issues with that. We now know how to deal with that. But there's a weakness here. If that first sector is damaged or moved, all your disk data is virtually inaccessible. Now you can go use some third-party tools and utilities to get the data back, but it's a hassle. Now, MBR disks are limited to three primary partitions and a single extended partition. Now, this is kind of ingrained in our blood now after all these years of dealing with this. And so anytime you see this three primary partitions and a single extended partition as a limitation on the exam, start to think this is an MBR. And if we need to exceed this, we need more than three primary partitions then we're going to have to go GPT. Now, there is one major advantage of MBR, and that is that the extended partition can have multiple logical drives, and then an even better advantage is that this is easily managed between multiple operating systems and third-party tools simply because it's been around so long, it's kind of a standard out there, and it's very easy to work cross-platform, those sort of things with that. Now let's talk about the GPT or the Globally Unique Identifier Partition Table. Now this was actually introduced in Windows Server in uh, the Windows Server 2003 edition uh, with Service Pack 1. Now this is recommended for disks that are larger than two terabytes. Burn that into your brain. If I've got a disk that's larger than two terabytes, I really would be better off using GPT. We won't talk about right now exactly why, but just Mark that down, okay? You can also use Itanium-based computers as a flag. You want to use GPT on Itanium-based computers or computers with disks larger than 2 terabytes. Now, GPT supports an unlimited number of primary partitions. Hang on to that because, if you remember, MBR, you had three primaries and an extended, and that can be a limiting issue sometimes. GPT gives you an unlimited number of primary partitions. Now this is great when you need to segment data for security, for multiple hosting environments, anything like that where you need multiple primary partitions and you need more than three, GPT is the answer. Now you gotta watch this and watch for this on the exam. GPT is only recognized by the Windows operating system and it has to be Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 and later. So you can take these few bullet points that I've given you here on MBR and GPT and you can probably navigate your way through any exam question that you have out there about the type of partition you use. But if you're not really familiar with either one of these, and quite frankly, not many of us are because we don't do this very often, only when we set up a server or a disk. And if that's not our job, we do this once every few months, maybe. So if either of these are kind of gray for you, go out and read about them, dig into them just a little bit, 
But I, for what I've seen and what I've heard on the exam, this is probably enough information to get you past most of the questions that would have to do with partitions. So make sure that you've got it straight between MBR and GPT partitions.